Okay, here's a quick Samsung Galaxy precedent review. Um, I guess you might say it's more of an overview since the phone hasn't been released yet. And the precedent is Stray Talk's first Android phone. Uh, so it's caused a lot of excitement among Stray Talk users and some Android people as well. In mid-August uh, is when we first heard about the possibility of this Android phone heading to Stray Talk. Um, shortly thereafter, Stray Talk confirmed that we would be getting this phone um, with an announcement on their Facebook page. And then on September 1st is when they announced that you could actually pre-order the Samsung Galaxy Precedent. At that time, they said it would ship in two to three weeks. Uh, which would place the official release sometime in mid-September. In the following presentation, I've put together some details that I've been able to scrape, scrape together about this phone. First, some of the advantages about the precedent. Um, it is the first and currently the only Android phone for Straight Talk. Um, Samsung has developed a lot of other um, Android devices for other carriers, and they have a reputation for quality. Another advantage um, is 3G and Wi-Fi. Now, for as far as an Android phone, 3G and Wi-Fi are pretty much um, basic requirements for an Android phone to work well. But as far as Straight Talk and their previous offerings, uh, 3G and Wi-Fi both are pretty uncommon. So if you're a former Straight Talk user, that's going to be new to you, and you'll really like the uh, fast data connection. Another big advantage is the Android Marketplace. Um, there are over a quarter of a million apps, and if you are a prepaid Android phone owner, it doesn't matter that it's a prepaid, prepaid device. You'll still get access to the same apps as the people who have the uh, higher-priced contracts. And maybe the most obvious advantage, but a big one, is that you'll save a lot of money um, just on your monthly fees compared to if you got a similar phone and signed a contract with one of the big four, um, which are Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, and Sprint. There are also some disadvantages for the precedent. Um, on the advantages slide, I said that an advantage is that it's the first Android phone on Straight Talk. I can also see that that might be a disadvantage for some people. Um, anytime that a company comes out with a new product, you never know quite how it's all going to work out. And being that this is the first Android phone on Straight Talk, I guess there's the possibility that it's, uh, you know, there might be some kinks that have to be ironed out for Straight Talk before everything works smoothly. Another disadvantage, and uh, something that many people don't realize, is that this phone is going to be using the Sprint network. Now, Straight Talk made a name for themselves with excellent network coverage through uh, Verizon and AT&T's networks. This is going to be their first product to use Sprint. And in many cases, coverage from Sprint is not going to be as good as Verizon or AT&T, um, especially in rural areas, small towns, and country roads. Uh, Sprint coverage is going to be non-existent or very weak. Um, in general, though, in, in major metro areas and along major highways, Sprint is going to do just fine. So before you buy this phone, you're going to have to stop and think about where you're using your phone and uh, where you're going to be when you need to connect to the network. Another advantage, excuse me, another disadvantage is that it can only be used with the more expensive of Straight Talk's two plans. Uh, the $30 plan is... Um, includes only 30 megabytes of data. Now with this phone, you'll be required by Straight Talk to use a $45 monthly plan. That includes unlimited everything. Um, so if you're currently a Straight Talk user and you're on the lower price plan, if you buy this phone, you're gonna have to bump up to the $45 a month plan. Um, so it may, it may increase your costs on a monthly basis, but really when you compare it to any other plan out there, uh, $45 for unlimited data is really a good deal still. And then a couple of hardware items that I noted as disadvantages. First, the camera is kind of weak. Um, at only 2.0 megapixels, it's I think it's probably the smallest, or the um, lowest resolution camera that I've ever seen on a Straight Talk phone, or on a, excuse me, on a an Android phone. Um, some Android phones 
are even getting up into like the 8.0 megapixel range now and I would say 5 is kind of the, the standard or maybe even the minimum for most Android phones. So 2.0 is a pretty small number in terms of megapixels. And of course there are other, you know, other things to think about when you're evaluating the quality of a camera. Um, megapixel is just one, but it's the easiest one to, to look at in terms of just looking at the numbers on a spec sheet. And the other disadvantage is the 3.2 inch screen. That seems a little small for a touchscreen Android phone. Um, it seems like the screen size is trending bigger and bigger for Android devices. I think 4.0 inches is kind of maybe the standard now. And um, just based on the way screens are measured, where they're measured diagonally, that little difference, it doesn't seem like a lot when you're just talking about um, you know, going from 3.2 to 4 inches, but when you do the math, it's actually a pretty big percentage in terms of the space that you're losing on the screen. So really, I think the only way to measure it is to, um, the only way to evaluate how well the screen size works for you is to actually handle the phone and see how well you can um, navigate through the Android uh, apps and the menus. Um, but I am a little nervous about that 3.2 inch number. And quickly here, just a couple of other features um, that I thought were worth mentioning. It does have an MP3 player. Uh, there are five home screens for um, putting menus, shortcuts, and apps on the home screens. It does include a micro SD card slot, which can support up to 32 gigabytes. And this is nice because um, it gives you a way to add memory as you need it, or to even swap out different memory cards at different times. And then finally, the gravity sensor and tilt and shake feature um, that'll be used for some of the apps and some of the uh, navigation features. So it's kind of a, a nice thing to have with an Android phone there. The bottom line here is that I'm convinced that this is the beginning of something very big for straight talk. I think that they need to really embrace the Android market if they want to stay competitive and continue adding subscribers. So I'm sure that this won't be the last Android device that we see from them. To be honest with this particular device, the precedent, I'm not really all that impressed with the technical specs and I really wish that it wasn't on Sprint. But if you are a current Straight Talk user and you want to try out an Android device, or if you already have used Android devices in the past and you want to uh, save a little money each month by switching to a prepaid, I think that um, Straight Talk especially and um, this device are probably a good way to go. I'm definitely going to give it a try myself as I'm excited to uh, get Android on an unlimited plan for such a low rate. And um, I know that I was kind of harsh on the phone as far as um, spending a lot of time talking about the disadvantages, but really I just wanted to spell out all the things that you need to consider before you go ahead and commit to spending this money on this phone. Um, but really, if you're curious, the only way to find out about it is to try it out. And uh, if you've considered the disadvantages that I mentioned and you are still interested in the phone, I think go ahead and give it a try. Um, it's really, you know, you're not signing a contract. It's a prepaid phone. So this is a good way to try it out. Now, once this phone finally does come out, I am going to uh, go ahead and review it as I do with all the Straight Talk phones. Um, I don't know how long it'll take for the phone to actually ship. As I said, they were uh, kind of estimating a mid-September release date, so that should be any day now. And as soon as I get it in my hands, I will put up another YouTube video and also review it on my blog. Um, I'll put a link to that review page in the description. Thanks for watching, and uh, come on and check back in a few weeks, and hopefully I'll have a lot more to talk about with this phone.